This is Twit. So Google broke the audience and the press when it showcased its duplex technology on stage at Google I.O. a few months ago. That's the technology that Google has tested on businesses that can carry a normal human conversation with convincing non-robotic voice characteristics and occasional utterances like uh and um, that sort of stuff. So it's only right that the press should get to break Google duplex. Joining us is the man who claims to have done just that. Welcome to the show, Sam Rutherford from Gizmodo. How are you doing, Sam? Hey, how's it going? Nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Really appreciate you taking the time. So uh, first of all, Sam, we need to kind of fill in some of the blanks. It seems like out of nowhere, very suddenly, an embargo lifted yesterday <laughs> that revealed that a few select uh, in individuals, yourself included, were invited mm -hmm. to check Duplex out uh, for yourself. So how how did this kind of all come about? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm not really sure, you know, what their criteria was for picking the people to, you know, attend their demo. But uh, earlier this week at a, at a Thai restaurant in New York City, um, they kind of hosted like a, a more in-depth briefing about, you know, what Duplex is after they showed it off at Google I.O. Because, you know, they at the show, they only showed like a quick snippet. And like, you know, there were so many like reactions and takes that came out of that where I think they wanted to have a chance to kind of talk more about what Duplex is and get more in depth with a lot of the details and answer a lot of questions that people had. So um, it sounds like members of the press, yourself included, got to actually be close to, if not kind of interact with it to some degree. How how on earth did mm -hmm. you break it? What did you do? Uh, so, uh, so the setup they had was, you know, they they kind of rented out a Thai restaurant, and then they had uh, Duplex call the restaurant's phone line, and then they gave the journalists there uh, a chance to go in and talk to it and kind of play the role of the restaurant host while Duplex tried to make a reservation. And they were even doing things like taking requests for like party size or time and date from the people who were in attendance. Uh, and then, you know, just so that we had a sense that, oh, this isn't something that was like a, a completely canned demo. Like, you know, it was definitely reacting to the people um, at the briefing. So you said that even though you broke it, uh, you were still mm -hmm. suitably impressed. What, what impressed you about the technology? Yeah, so I mean, so the way I kind of uh, uh, tackled trying to break Duplex because, you know, four other people went before me and, uh, they all, you know, added a little twist that you would, some people would ask about allergies. Um, other people would, uh, they would ask, you know, I, I, oh, I can't do this this day, but can you do some other day? And, uh, you know, they all had successful reservations. So what I wanted to do is uh, I, whatever duplex asked to make a time, I would say the restaurant was closed then. Um, and then my, like what impressed me the most is the way that du uh, duplex was able to, uh, respond to understand our like how we were talking to it, and then you know take those uh, curveballs and you know make something that worked. Um, and, and eventually, it did make a reservation, although it did have to have the help of a human operator. Yeah, and that's that's a really important uh, piece that I don't think we knew until until this experience yesterday. And everybody yeah, and, was uh, writing. About I didn't this. I didn't know that either until until that event. So, okay, so did Google give you any sort of background indication as far as how how the human involvement will will run in this? Because it's my understanding that when you're talking about the millions of queries that could go through, you know, once this hits everybody's phone, all the potential users, I mean, even if even if there's 99.5% success rate on this right. stuff, that remaining amount is still an insane amount of help in the, in the form mm -hmm. of human users. So, how, like, do you have any indication or any idea how Google might be planning to tackle that? Um, and so I think that's kind of the whole point of this demo and, you know, just kind of getting the news out there that they are going to start rolling duplex out in public. Um, however, they specifically said it's going to be very limited users, very limited amount of businesses that will be participating in duplex because, like I said, uh, they only have about an 80 percent success rate right now. So they really have to kind of, you know, use those human operators to not only monitor calls, but step in uh, in the event that there is something that, you know, fl Flemix is a duplex. Sure. So we should say that uh, the reason we're not playing your um, demo was they, they wouldn't let you record anything. So Yes. Like I was really hoping to record some video because, you know, it would have been great to have that, you know, on-site uh, footage. But, you know, I guess they, they weren't prepared for that. Yeah. <laughs> and so what if a Makes restaurant sense. doesn't want to have the Google's robo robots, like, unleashed mm -hmm. upon their their hostess or host or s staff at all? Like, can they say, like, no thanks? 
Yeah, uh, that, that's totally reasonable. And Google is very clear that Duplex will be an opt-in service. Um, they showed like uh, some sort of web form where you know it was a click uh, checkbox where you know restaurant owners or whoever could go and say, oh, we want to be part of Duplex um, or not. And that prepares them ahead of time because I know that there's another change that I know when I when I saw Google, uh, Google the Google I/O experience and really thought about it in, in you know the few hours after it when everybody was just kind of shocked about what they saw. Mm -hmm. What I realized is you know anybody receiving that call doesn't immediately know that it's a robot doesn't immediately know that in some way shape or form their audio is being captured on a server somewhere or whatever. Google made a change there, and so that kind of ties in that, with that, right? Oh yeah, uh, they specifically, um, you know, as soon as Duplex calls, there's a little warning that says, "Hi, I'm Google's automated uh, phone service. Uh, I'm here to make a reservation on behalf of whoever," um, and and that's the first thing you hear when Duplex uh, calls you. So that immediately you kind of it sets the premise for what's going to happen, and you're not wor worrying about like, "Oh man, is this some like creepy AI who's like you know might be doing something harmful or not?" It's like you know it's very clear and straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Did it sound creepy when you were talking to it? Uh, I, I don't. I don't think creepy is the right word. It's definitely very convincing. Although I noticed that after like watching like three or four people, um, you know, talk to Duplex, those ums and ahs, which sounded like super natural the first time you saw it, it actually started to become repetitive when you hear it's like, you know, Duplex would call, and it, the first thing it would say before it even said a word, it would say um, and it would do this every time at the beginning of each call, and it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like programmed human uh, kind of copying, yeah. And, and so it, it was really interesting to see, you know, what they, how they uh, went to. Uh, uh, attack that sol uh, solution. Yeah, and uh, instead of needing to disclose it up front, all they have to do is assume that if you hear the very first word is um, you know you're mm -hmm. talking to a robot, right? <laughs> I mean, it's so obvious. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> and, no, and it's interesting because they said that those ums and ahs were something that they uh, installed to help bring up success rates because sure. when you know the computer does sound very robotic, they would have people just hang up the call in the middle. Um, and so they wanted to, the, anything they can do to keep the conversation going. And it's the same thing as like, you know, if you ask someone, oh, is seven o'clock ready? Uh, is seven o'clock a good time? You know, the host has to maybe go check a book or look up a computer. And so they would have duplex say, mm-hmm, as a way to like remind the person who's talking to duplex that there is still someone on the line. It might not be a person, but someone's listening. Yeah, some sort of a, a signal of confirmation. Like, I got you. I'm waiting for you. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Um, so who is going to get the chance? You, you said it was a limited rollout. Is the, is the idea that ultimately this is going to be available to all users of, of Google Assistant? It would be embedded into the assistant experience or is this going to go into maps and places tied to, mm -hmm. to businesses where are users going to find this uh I, absolutely i think that's the end goal is to bring duplex and build that feature into the google assistant so it'll be available on your phone your tablet your android tv box anywhere you know you'd normally use the google assistant um however you know there's no specific timetable on like a full public uh rollout right now they're just kind of trying to get duplex out into the wild so they can get more feedback on it and they said that they just still wanted to evaluate you know how businesses respond to it and how useful it is and then obviously make any improvements where they can will it be available on my assistant app on my iphone uh i had just, they didn't have any i iphone devices there um i i would assume so because it's the same google assistant across everything so i don't see why not and so were the voices that you spoke to female voices or male voices or both? Yeah, uh, it was the, you know, the kind of the standard Google Assistant voice, although it had, you know, seen a, a little bit of improvement to add those ums and ahs and other sorts of natural language cues. Yeah, and I think you can, well, yeah, there's there's a female and a, a male voice in Assistant mm -hmm. and all, all different types. So maybe that's probably determined by the Assistant that you are, have running on your phone. Uh, I'm not really quite sure. Did this yep. feel to you... Like one thing that I was kind of wondering about is they came out of Google I.O. with this with this announcement. And then I feel like Google saw a lot of pushback from a lot of people that were very critical over yeah. how this could be, you know, manipulative and used in a, in a negative sort of Robot way. Robot apocalypse. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, all the typical things we talk about when we talk about AI <laughs> taking over the world. Um, did this feel like a mea culpa event or did, this, or did this seem like a standard promotional kind of like, yeah, hey, let's let the press in on something cool or, or did it really feel like 
like, all right, we realize we came off on the wrong foot before, so we want to do this again to set the record straight. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it was quite an admission that they made a mistake. I just think that they were very cognizant that the demo that showed at uh, Google I.O., you know, had a lot of people just instantly speculating. And sure. so they were just trying to get more information out to, you know, obviously calm some of the people who were worried about, you know, our incoming robot overlords. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, try to like, you know, seed some of those details and kind of just get people, maybe just the general public, more aware that stuff like this is coming. Yeah. Does it strike you as odd that they're focusing so much energy on this? Or maybe it's not so much energy, we're just focusing a lot of time on it, but on something that's sort of going uh, by the wayside anyway? I mean, you you know, most of us don't make phone calls. There's very, very few mm -hmm. phone calls that we need to make uh, anymore, res restaurant reservations, like sometimes appointments, but mostly everything's, you know, through an app. Is it is it strange that yeah. they're spending so much time with going backwards a little? Um, so w one thing that they were very clear on is that like, Duplex is just one piece of the puzzle. You know, so right now, you know, you can already make a reservation using Google Assistant. You just have to might do it through something like the Open Table app. Um, so this is kind of just adding one more way to automate things that you might want to do anyways. Uh, and then on top of that, Google said that out of small businesses, only 40% uh, of businesses have some, some sort of online uh, reservation system. So there's still a ton of uh, businesses out there that just rely solely on incoming phone calls. Yeah, so it ends up saving the user the need to make the, the antiquated, in air quotes, telephone mm -hmm. call. Uh, yep. But the business might, that just might be the only way that you get through to them is either to walk in or, or go through the phone. Yeah, uh, and they, they also said... Um, uh, added things about, you know, this is also helps people uh, with ac accessibility or it also helps, you know, tourists who are, you know, might be visiting a new country, you know, they can make a reservation in Google Assistant using their own language and then have duplex call and speak English to, you know, whatever restaurant that they are at. Oh, I hadn't even considered that. That's a really good, uh, really good use case. Uh, mm -hmm. does, did your experience leave you optimistic about artificial intelligence? Um, what, what did you think coming away from it? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely had a positive experience on that because, you know, they also showed that, you know, m making these individual skills. So Duplex currently will have or is planning on having three skills, one to check holiday hours, uh, one to book restaurant reservations and one to make uh, hair appointments. And they said that through in, in order to develop each of these three skills, there was a ton of humor interaction where they're annotating calls and then like uh, physically or not physically, but like, you know, doing hands-on touches to the algorithm to make sure that duplex was functioning correctly. So it's not something where I'm at all worried about, you know, this AI is going to develop into something that's going to run away and start, you know, taking over other AIs and, you know, that's going to be where Skynet starts. Uh, not, not at all. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely positive. And it said they were, you know, they were pretty, pretty focused on, you know, we want this to be beneficial to both businesses and users. And if it's not, then they're not going to, they're going to have to, you know, rework something or figure out what they need to fix. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Sam Rutherford uh, with Gizmodo, gizmodo.com. Sam, where can people follow you online? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Sam Rutherford. Right on. Sam, thank you so much for jumping on and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Great. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care. Yeah.